So he's falling him back down this hole. The cedar climb out, yeah. Okay. Ooh. This isn't supposed to be Vinland, is it? Yeah, love the sun. <laughs> his voice sounds slightly different here as well. It was all a dream, and he's actually just here with father, yeah. He's so chatty, so different. Oh, yeah, that's what's actually happening. <sighs> Aina does have the fighting spirit, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, not giving up. <laughs> As again, is a door knockout there? <laughs> Haven't seen Forfin knocked out that many times, have we? Actually, lose the fight. It was always against Escalad. Yeah, will they actually have a bit of respect for him because of this? No, they're just coming back to make things worse. Yeah, it's all going to negative the effect them, okay? As you can all, would they have a little bit of respect? Or if he had really got the upper hand, they'd be too scared to do anything again, but I don't think that's the case. Also, be sure to check out the Patreon page when you get next week's episode. Right now, you can also find polls to vote for this next, some full-length reactions so you can watch along with me, and some exclusive Studio Ghibli reactions. Oh yeah, I was just thinking, we will have a second core, won't we? A new song as well, in a few episodes' time. Fours, okay. Ooh, looking a bit down. Ooh, smell blood. Oh, he's killed plenty of people. Yeah, his dad's blade that he used so many times. I'm trying to remember the exact speech he gave when he gave him the blade, but it was all about the responsibility. And young Aina as well. Wow. Yeah, choose it for good, for protection. He's in his warrior outfit now. Oh, he's thinking bad of his own teaching as well. So good, the music. Must leave you behind. Nobody is your enemy. Yeah, and of course. All people is killed, ghosts of his past. Oh, falling even deeper. Oh, holding on so he doesn't fall forever though. Right on the edge, <laughs> right on the edge of forever, perhaps. <laughs> oh, really grotesque. 
No, the opposite. <laughs> Or is it a critique on Valhalla? Say, you know, Valhalla's where will the warriors go? Are any of these supposed to be specific people? No, that could have been Bjorn there. Just constant eternal fighting and suffering. But they're enjoying it, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's Bjorn. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and Ascalad's here too. But he's kind of above everyone else. <laughs> Even in the afterlife, he's coming to visit. Oh, yeah, it's the same as the real world, just all condensed, all the violence. There's never a winner in violence. The way to win is never fight in the first place. Dropping the blade again. For him becoming hollow actually freed him a bit, yeah. Yeah, once you're a warrior, you're kind of stuck in that life. He managed to escape. Same as Fours. Fours escaped for a little bit, but was dragged back in. Mm. There's still a little bit of that aspect in him. Well, this self-reflection is proving that you're learning. Others are trying to escape too. <laughs> or should he be helping them because they're trying to escape? Are they trying to escape or they're just trying to get to him? Mm. Yeah, of course. I wonder if you could actually find these same characters in the previous seasons. Yeah, and he's crying. Some that he doesn't even recognize. Yeah, no idea who they are. See, this is the music they usually play over like beautiful landscapes, beautiful moments. <laughs> Ascalad's back in the action. Yeah, get going, climb back up, return to the surface. Become a true warrior, yeah. Ooh. Going for the sketchy style. It's got chills. Oh, and he's back. Finally made the realization. And it's snowing. Did Ina just leave him there then? Oh no, Ina claps as well, okay. But so it's only up from here. 
<laughs> oh my god, on your rope. <laughs> That's not how Forfin sees it. People like your family, yeah. Just for no reason. Yeah, wow. Never resort to violence again. Go for pacifist. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Finally seeing fours. Become a true warrior. Oh. They're off the hook completely. They're, they're just getting back to work. Oh, actual evidence. Yeah. Oh, they're just covering it up as that. Okay, that's the story they're going with. Both sides get off easy. Hmm, that's his new life. His life as a farmer. Okay, there we have Vinland Saga Season 2 Episode 9. This is the exact moment we've all been waiting for, isn't it? It's just finally... You know, we've known this coming for so long, for Finn having this self-realization, self-actualization, figuring out his purpose and reflecting on his past. And of course, it's Askeladd and Fors who are coming into his head to, you know, tell him about this. It's he, the, the, these versions of him that he has in his head that are confronting him on this and pushing him forward, especially Askeladd, you know, he, for so long, he was so tied down by Askeladd, and of course, it's going to be Askeladd telling him to move on, to, you know, live your life, and push yourself forward, but then we have Fours as well at the start, showing disappointment in him using his blade for killing, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think back to episode two of season one, exactly what Fors said there. I remember, you know, it's about a true warrior and only fighting when necessary. So he, the, the blade wasn't used for its intended purpose. And we see eventually it was dropped. I don't know what happened to that blade, actually. Maybe Canute has it. That could be interesting because... He dropped it in the room where Escalade was killed and we got all of that flashback. So if it was in that room and Forfin didn't take it himself, even if he did take it, he wouldn't be able to keep it as a slave, obviously. So it would be Canute perhaps having it or Floki or someone in that room could have picked it up. That would be interesting if Canute had it. And again, that, could Canute be misusing it? Um, and then Forfin gets it back. You know, there, there is still that kind of question of how Canute comes into all of this. I imagine the stories will intertwine at some point. We, we did have that one episode with him, didn't we, a few episodes ago. Eventually, they're going to run into each other again, which will be really interesting. Will they even recognize each other? Who knows what will happen in that case? But it definitely will be interesting to see how that happens. But again, yeah, just majority of this episode all happening in Forfin's head. It was exactly what I wanted, really, when we saw some of that imagery in the last episode. And he goes down into what he was thinking of Valhalla at first, but it was really just this kind of constant, this kind of place where there's a constant state of battle and everyone's actually enjoying themselves a bit. All of this destruction and, you know, Bjorn is there, Askeladd is there, but he's slightly above everyone else. I remember remembering when he said he hated all of the um, 
Vikings, so he maybe sees himself a bit above them, but still does go down there occasionally and lower himself to their level. And Thorfinn had actually, yeah, at this point, he had actually escaped that lifestyle because he was empty. He was one of the few that managed to escape. Even Thors couldn't escape it forever, you know, what the events of season one. He tried his best to escape, but it did come back round to him. But Thorfinn has actually escaped I do wonder if anything would come back round to him you know I'd speculated before with Ina if it turns out he was involved in what happened to Ina's family at some point but there could be a case where someone shows up who has a vendetta against him in a similar way to him and um, Askeladd you know maybe something that mirrors that and would Thorfinn just accept it and say, yeah, you have the right to kill me or to injure me, you know, take your shot, come, you know, come at me. I wonder if that's how that would go down or would someone come along and say, you're Thorfinn and he'll say, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not Thorfinn anymore. You know, he's completely changed. He's a new person. Maybe he will drop the fourth in name although that's more associated with fours, isn't it? So it's, it's not like that name is fully associated with being the warrior that's not completely like that persona that name is also tied to fours it's the name fours gave him so and i don't know if he would drop the fourth in name probably not actually but that would be a possibility i think if it wasn't tied to him like that and yeah once he's woken up he's dedicated his life to pacifism now um, i do wonder how that will go because you you obviously do every single thing you can to avoid conflict, to avoid fights. I personally, I've never been in a fight. I've never been in a situation where I've had to fight. I like avoid those situations. I try and defuse situations if I can, if it's things are amping up or try and like, yeah, get out of the situation. But if it came down to it, there probably is still times you do have to fight. I don't know. Or is Thorfinn just so strong he would just take a beating instead of fighting back there's a kind there's a kind of two ideologies of like being strong strong enough so you can fight if necessary or just never fighting at all which it seems like Thorfinn that's the route Thorfinn's going down I don't know if that's maybe a bit naive and you know the certain situations maybe you would have to you know, um, Force here was saying no one has any enemies, no one deserves to be hurt, which I kind of agree with. But if there is someone who has done like something truly unforgivable or yeah, wants to fight, how, how, how does that work? Because there's the kind of no one deserves to be hurt. Maybe this is someone who was hurt in the past, in their childhood, and now has become someone who does something unforgivable. They didn't deserve to be hurt in the first place. But do they deserve to be hurt now after they do some sort of heinous act? You know, that's a question to I wonder if the show will go there and have someone who is like truly despicable, no remorse. And how how that conflicts with Thorfinn's ideology, how that challenges that. Because if you had someone who was like truly like genocidal and had no remorse showed you know, no pity at all, just in, did it for the sake of enjoying it, how would that conflict with Thorfinn's ideology, this new ideology of complete pacifism? I think that would be an interesting interaction, interesting to see how this all gets challenged and the challenges he faces now that he has this pacifism. It, it's actually making me think of, you know, there's the whole thing of would you kill baby Hitler? Then there's kind of challenging forth in on this would you kill current like you know fully grown hitler and then i was just thinking back to like the ideal world is you've got baby hitler and you raise him to in a way where he won't become the monster that he does eventually become that's the kind of true pacifism is it's like a longer term goal a longer term journey of everyone being raised where they don't commit these atrocious acts, where there is no evil. The way to eradicate evil is you do it from the source, you know. You have to raise people, raise a world without it. And I think it's maybe even going back to 
the kind of thesis of the show because a lot of it is what is it to be a man but then there's also a lot of the Canute stuff in season one of what is love and what does it mean to love people or to be loving and to give love and to kind of build like a loving society to be forgiveful as well you know give second chances with with seeing Thorfinn he, he's given a second chance here because he does truly want to change and there is true remorse there but to give someone a second chance that does require love and requires forgiveness and you know with Ina here Ina hadn't been a like one-to-one -one victim of four Finn's actions but they they act as parallels don't they and Ina does maybe not forgive him but he's giving him this opportunity for a second chance it would be interesting to run into someone who is a victim of Thorfinn's actions and for them to perhaps forgive him or for them to not forgive him and see how that conflicts with him see how the ideologies bounce off of each other will be really interesting but yeah I'm really loving where everything is going this season and it's just this moment we've been waiting for for, for so so long I'm just glad we're finally here and we, we can see how things are finally developing so thank you for watching this I hope you enjoyed this if you did be sure to leave a like comment your thoughts down below and be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on all the future uploads yeah thanks for watching see you guys later